course, you got ball games. My God, there's about 40 different kinds. You know, football, baseball, soccer ball, kicker ball. Right. Uh, oh, ball. and and and, oh. and don't forget the nice orange ball that you put through the little round metal hoop called basketball. Of course. And they pay those uh, running, jumping uh, yeah. African Americans tens of millions of dollars a year to put the little uh, orange ball <laughs> through the round hoop. That's it. So it's just a ball game, and the whole idea is give the kids something to do. I mean, that's why you have sports in colleges and universities. Give the kids something to do. They've got a lot of energy. They've got a lot of uh, vitality and energy. Right. Hormones. Dissipate that. Hormones. Dissipate it. Yeah, yeah, just dissipate it. Give them plenty of to do so they are, they are, at the end of the day they have played ball, they've kicked the ball, and stumbled over the ball, and played with the ball, so they're all tired, and now they want to do is and, drink. And, 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 and what do you, yes, and what do you do with the ball? You score with the ball. Sports <laughs> is an analogy for the sexual act. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, so, put the ball in the, in the round hoop. You score. It. Okay? It's, it's an incredible... You run the ball into the end zone. You get <laughs> in. He got in! And <laughs> it's it's all as rudimentary and basic as it could possibly be, and no nope. one sees it. Nobody sees it. Well, I think the reason why is because there are none so blind as those who choose not yeah. to see. And you know, nope. the other part about sports is how it becomes literally the dominant portion of of people's personalities. They live, eat, and breathe a team, a logo, a mantra, a nickname. Uh, their lives are consumed exactly with the, right. the players. Uh, their, their lives, their sex scandals, their children, their, their how much money they're making. These are, these, my God, how can you have a life when you're in, <laughs> conned into that kind of a living? Oh, well, that's true. And that's why we're in the shape we're in. But uh, but for some reason, people gravitate toward that. You know, people like to be entertained. Uh, most people are not interested in facing reality. That's why you got grown-ups acting like children. We still have the Roman Colosseum. What do you and what do you think these teams are uh, in a in a stadium uh, facing off against each other? It's oh, sanitized it's war. It's, yeah, there. it's your army against our army. That's what it is. It's sanitized warfare. Of course. And, uh, and now, not to mention the, uh, the you know, boxing in, in Las Vegas, all the big boxing matches where they put two humans up and the mafia mm-hmm. and the Cosa Nostra is making millions of dollars on two humans beating the flying crap out of each other. And uh, the world loves it. People just love it. They were standing in, uh, in line to get in to watch humans beat each other up. Well, it's the same thing they did in Rome. And so, <clears throat> Another thing we're... about sports, Jordan, before we leave the subject, uh, the number of sporting events, games, uh, contests that are rigged for money oh, I, or yes. threats oh, yeah. or blackmail or bribery, uh, nobody would believe it if they knew. They oh, wouldn't okay. believe it. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've heard professional guys talking about that in seminars, and they're talking there's virtually never been a game anywhere of any size, professional, that wasn't rigged, period. This wow. is what they were saying. Wow. Just anything. You name the sport, and they can rig it. <laughs> and so and it's, all we're talking about is money. Just talking about business. So anyway, uh, you know, when I went off the air, that that's kind of scary because I, I have not, got, I haven't had a problem with Skype until I come on your show. And I don't. I what, think I, I think there are government people who would like to mess with me, and uh, I'm not surprised. And, well, me too. You have and had I, so I, much <laughs> of that. I have too, and as a matter of fact, I've been I have been pulled off of different shows in the past. Mm-hmm. Just, my my phone just goes dead, and uh, so. Oh, I know, I know. But anyway, I've had to deal with that over and over again. But, you know, I was talking about something I thought was important. All uh, unhappily, I was just talking to myself there for three or four minutes. But 
I was just talking about the uh, the 500 million. Did you hear me saying anything about that? No, but when you talk to yourself, there's not much chance for argument. So go no, ahead. No, that's true. That's Tell true. us. And I know me, <laughs> and I know me well enough. I'm not going to bring it up if I don't like the subject. There you go. Tell but, us about uh, 500 million. Well, the 500 million uh, on the Georgia Guidestones. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's. That was strange because when I heard that, the first time I heard that, I thought, wait a minute, 500 million? Where have I heard that before? It goes back to ancient Egypt. And the ancient Egyptians uh, said that if you could go through the North Pole, uh, from the North Pole, exactly at the North Pole, and go straight through the Earth to the South Pole and divide that distance into 500 million divisions, it would be called an inch or a sacred inch. And so the, uh, the idea is that uh, from the North Pole to the South Pole, straight through, like a laser straight through the Earth, is 500 million inches. And this 500 million is, is, uh, gives Christianity the basis for what we call Christian uh, uh, measurements. And so a lot of people don't know Christianity has a lot of Egyptian and ancient measurement systems built into Christianity. Well, during the French Revolution, Robespierre and Danton and some of the other people with him, they came up with the idea that if you're going to overthrow the French government, you're going to be messing with the French Catholic establishment of Europe. And so you're going to have to overthrow the Catholic Church too with it. And so they developed an idea because they, the, the French Grand Orient Masons, Danton and Robespierre, as I said, and others, they realized, we don't know anything about it, but they realized if you're going to undo Christianity, you've got to destroy the measurement systems that Christianity is based on. And so it was based on the 500 million inches of, of Egypt or the 500 million inches uh, uh, that we use today. And so they developed a new idea for a whole new world order, and they called it metric. And so the way Danton and uh, Rose Pierre and the Temple Orient, the Orient Templars of France, came up with this idea, let's change the entire way Western civilization measures things. And that will start a whole new world order. So what they did, they said, you know, because you go from north to south pole, 500 million inches, what we will do is we'll call it metric, and we'll go from the north pole to the equator, and then double that to the south pole, and then that will be the new metric system. And upon the metric system, we will build what we call the new world order. Huh. The Novus Ordo Seclorum, huh. a whole new world of order based on the metric system. Uh -huh. So you just need to look at that metric system and understand that was to design, that whole concept of metric was designed to destroy the foundations of Christian civilization. And, and there's no doubt in my mind that it's done very well doing just that because now today almost the whole world is dealing with metric. It's only America and England who are sticking to the old way, you know, the old Christian uh -huh. concept of the inch and the foot, etc. And, and it's well, a that's, yeah. there brings up the number 12, which is that's the, right. base, the base of Christianity. That's exactly right. That's why you have a ruler. Yeah. Jesus is the ruler. So oh you have my. a ruler, yeah. and he has 12 <laughs> followers. So you have 12 inches. All of this is very interesting if you can get into it without getting cut off by the government. It really gets very deep and very interesting when you start looking at how the uh, system is set up to destroy Christian civilization, Western civilization, and from there you can begin to uh, see how the collapse of Europe has been planned, it's purposely being planned. Obviously, the Europeans do not want their, their country, uh, uh, you know, destroyed. But for some reason, they have no power to do anything. They are being destroyed right in front of your face. And, uh, and the leaders of the European, uh, uh, countries are under obligation to follow someone. Somebody is pulling the strings in Europe to destroy the entire uh, Christian civilization. So and look that's at Mrs. Why. Merkel. That's your perfect example. A perfect example. Perfect. 
Every time you see her, she's giving hand signs. She's giving Kabbalistic hand signs. I've seen her at least 25, 30 times mm. in different pictures holding her hands together in the Kabbalistic symbol. Mm. Yeah, and it's everywhere. And, of course, mm -hmm. I see all the political leaders when they get together. I see a lot of them with their Kabbalistic hand signs. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's astonishing well, how you much... you see rock stars oh, doing the same... Uh, same hand, identical thing. Hand thing. Uh, this is interesting. So the, the, the war against Western Christian values and yes. Western Christian ethics... Mm -hmm. uh, is once again on in earnest, and this appears to be the final the final battle. They're going into yep. Europe. I just had a story today. Another two hundred fifty thousand of what they call Syrian refugees have gone into Europe in the in the first part of this year already. Now these are not all Syrians. We know that now. And if anybody just reads. So, <laughs> Somalia is not Syria. Uh, black Africans who, who call themselves Muslims are not traditional Muslims. This is all a scam, and they're using just bodies. Look at the pictures, Jordan. What do you see when you see pictures of these groups of people? You see yeah. young men of fighting age. They're all in their 20s and early 30s. You hardly see females. You don't see them. Uh, and this whole thing of, of Islam... Uh, mutilating women, uh, treating women like they're a piece of meat, garbage, uh, the hypocrisy, the pedophilia that's institutionalized in Islam, one of the big secrets of how these men buy the young boys, especially in Afghanistan, Pakistan, they do it. Uh, everything, they is, everything is a lie. It's all a lie. It's all rigged. All of it. And it's all demonic. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a totally demonic presence on the earth. And why do we have three major religions? Why three? Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Why three? And why is it that all the gods of the world are always a triune gods? In, mm. in Hindu, you have Brahma, Vishnu, Siva. In, in, in Egypt, you have Isis, Horus, and uh, uh, Osiris, Isis, Horus, and uh it's always a triumvirate, uh, always. Yeah, it's always a triumvirate. Then you got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And, of course, in Judaism, you got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's always a triumvirate, always three. Why three? There's a reason. It goes all the way back to secret societies, going all the way back into ancient history. Uh, it's, and, and when you see how the world is being manipulated with the words and the terms, it's all part of secret societies operating on the on the body politics of the world. But people have no idea in the world. They can understand a little bit if you mention mafia, if you mention uh, you know gangs, like motorcycle gangs or whatever. All right, so at least you can understand. There's a group there. It's a group thinking, and they're not thinking for you. They're thinking for themselves. Well, take it to the next step. Maybe that's a Republican Party, a Democratic Party. Yeah, you know, they're having a party, all right. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, yeah. And then you begin to look at, well, wait, maybe, wait a minute, maybe it's the Communist Party, or maybe it's an American system. And now, before you know it, you begin to see pattern, pattern recognition. You begin to see the entire world is in the hands of gangs. <clears throat> so it is, war gangsters. Gang yep, gangsters, stirs. that's it. If you look in uh, guests uh, on your homepage at Rents, you look under there and you'll see, uh, I've got a little entry. It says Jordan's family history. And he sent me a little note just before the program. <laughs> jo Jordan's got a, a columnist feature box with lots of his little uh, clip art and, and uh, historical tidbits. Fascinating to walk through that. This is interesting. I didn't know this, and he's never shared this with me before. It's short. I'll read it. There were a great many more founding fathers, however, uh, even if their names are not so familiar as the above. And the above name is the Carroll family, C-A-R-R-O-L-L, -L, Catholic founding fathers, the Carroll family. 
Several of the lesser-known men who played key roles in the creation of the United States of America were Catholics. Chief among them were three members of the Carroll family of Maryland. Charles Carroll, the only Catholic signer of the Declaration of Independence, his cousin Daniel Carroll, and Daniel Carroll's brother, John Carroll, who became America's first Catholic bishop. Well, Jordan's mother's family were the Carrolls of Maryland. That's right. My mother used to tell me when I was growing up, don't ever forget that your family is the Carroll family from Washington, D.C. and Maryland. Remember that. And as a little kid, I don't know anything about that. I couldn't care less. But even in my teen years, my mother would from time to time remind me, do you remember me telling you about the Carroll family? I said, yes, Mom. I don't know what it means. She said, it means you're from the Carroll family in Maryland, Washington, D.C. And then before she passed away, I talked with her in the hospital, and she said to me, remember what I told you. You are from the Carroll family. That's your ancestry in Washington, D.C. and Maryland. And I told her, yes, I understand. I didn't understand. Only but I, but it was only until I read the book <clears throat> by Tupper Saucy called uh, Rulers of Evil. Very important book called Rulers of Evil by Tupper Saucy. And in there, he talked about the real founding of America and how it was the Carroll family of, of Maryland who were instigators in starting uh, the uh, Declaration of Independence and financing. And then he mentioned, too, that uh, it was the Carroll family who owned a farm or, or a ranch or a farm, I guess it would be. And, uh, and uh, they dedicated 10 square miles to George Washington for the new government. The Carroll family did. And, and guess, and guess where that me. is. Yeah. Yeah, and it shocked me because I remember my mother keep telling me yeah. would, would keep telling me that. Then, of course, with the coming of the movie mm -hmm. uh, National Treasure One and Two, in the beginning uh, of National Treasure One, it's about the Carroll family of Washington D.C. and Maryland, and uh, and I was amazed sitting and watching that movie uh, about the Carroll family. My mother used to tell me I was a you know it was my family from long ago, so. <clears throat> Uh, and I do know, I totally believe this to be true because I knew that during the time when I was growing up, my mother had two uncles who were judges. They were both appointed to the federal bench, and they uh, one of them was in my hometown. The other came through once in a while, but they were both Carroll. It was Uncle Frank Carroll and John Carroll, and I knew them, and I met them. So I know, you know, that two judges, federal judges in my family were Carols. And so when my mother tells me about the Carroll family, now I totally believe. And so that's I've never fascinating. Told you that before. You that's know, that, no, you've never told me that. Uh, Nicholas Cage was in, I guess, both of those movies, yeah. National National <laughs> Treasure. Uh, you wonder how a movie like that got made. There was a lot in there. <laughs> Yeah, and I got I got a I got an invitation from the Herzog Cowan Company to be a part of that movie. Uh, I turned them down, but they wanted me to be a part of. Uh, there was going to be a second video put out about the Carol about the uh, signing of Declaration, and they wanted me to be a part of it. They said, you know, we know who you are. We know that you've been talking about this for many years, and we'd like to have you be a part of the movie. And I said, I thank you, but no, I turned them down. But uh, wow. Well. So, well, yeah, that's so a very Hollywood nice tribute. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, now a hell of a lot more people do <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah. I didn't know about the Carols. I've yeah. known you for oh, well over 20 years now. You've never mentioned that. I know. I know. I, well, I just never thought to say anything to anyone because I didn't know. I didn't put a high price on that. I mean, I thought, so so what? I mean, that and two bucks would get well, you a cup of coffee. Well, it, it explains a lot. You have a, a patriot's heart that goes way back. Wow, that that's that. I have to I have to say I totally am in agreement with that. I have always loved this country, and I've always known about the dark side, all the machinations and mm -hmm. secret deals, and mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff going on behind the scenes with all the symbols. I know all about that stuff, and and uh, and it probably is because it's in my blood. I mean, I've always been that way. I've always thought that way. It's almost. Uh... 
almost <laughs> genetic. And why yeah. not? It could I be. I think that's exactly right. All right. Hold on, Jordan. We have to pause for a few minutes. We'll come right back. Another hour to go with Jordan as we continue. Don't go away. <laughs> 